It's in Matthew chapter 16. And we'll be reading from verse 13. Okay, if you find it, say amen. 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 When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But who say he that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You may now be seated, please. Have a seat, please. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. I believe, in my opinion, this is the most important question that one can ask. Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And I believe it is the same question that is asked today as it is echoed through the corridors of time that who do you say Jesus is? Who is he to you? And do you really believe it? Who is Jesus? If I should entitle it, it would be some question. First question is, who is Jesus to you? And do you really believe it? Here, in, in, when Jesus was walking this earth, he asked the question, um, who do men say that I am? And the, the disciples responded and said that some say thou art John the Baptist. As you know, John the Baptist was the forerunner of, of, of Jesus. And they said some say thou art Elias. And we know that he mean Elijah. He thought that Elijah came back. And um, they said, Jeremiah, another prophet. And, say, and, and it's the same way today that some people just see Jesus just as a normal man or see Jesus just as another prophet. All right? And they, they in turn, want to uh, um, put him in league with other religions, so to speak, and, and, and join him up with, 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 with those different um, other religions that say they... We talk, we talk about... Uh, uh, um, the, the, the Mormons. And um, so they, 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 they put their trust in these other religion, and they think that Jesus is the same thing. All right? And he said unto them, but who he say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said, Blessed art thou, Simon, for flesh and blood are not revealed unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Why is this so important? Because the next verse uh, uh, um, show the significance of this. Because you have to believe who Jesus is for you to have an intimate relationship with him. Uh -huh. All right? and, and, and Jesus said, And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. All right, I don't want, Jesus is not saying that he's building the church upon Peter. Because yes, Peter name means Cephas, means the stone. Yeah. All right, but when he says the rock, meaning the revelation, the word that was given, the revelation that was given to Peter by God, that thou art the, the, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, upon this revelation, upon this word, upon this foundation, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. So when you have other uh, 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 um, denominations saying that Jesus is his own father, something is definitely wrong there because they are not building upon this revelation that was made. You must understand, and that's why people are confused. So you see, you need to study the Word of God. You need to spend time and meditate upon the Word of God and understand what it is saying. So Jesus is clearly saying, unless you believe that, that I am who I say I am, 
You cannot have an intimate relationship with me. Because what you're there for saying that I am lying and that my father is lying. All right? And just to give you a little bit more ammunition, could you turn? It's, it's, and one of the things is that they're saying that Jesus is his own father and that he is God. I don't have any problem with the fact that they say that he is God. Because indeed he is God. But he's not God the Father. All right? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 1, please. All right, just bear with me as I lay this foundation because there's an issue the Lord wants us to, to deal with today because we're here together and he's going to show us that how much we need each other. Hebrews chapter 1. I was beginning at verse 1. It says, God who at sundry times and in divers manner spake in time past unto the Father by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son. So in the past, before Jesus came, he was using prophets who, who was, direct, who was uh, um, um, pointing people towards the coming of Jesus. And he's saying in these last days, he's talking to us directly by his Son. All right? So he's saying that you don't have to pray to St. Thomas. You don't have to pray to St. Peter. You don't have to go to the Pope. Jesus is the one you need to because without you, Jesus emphatically say, I am what? The way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So Jesus is in fact, I, I, um, before I jump, let me read a little further. In the last is spoken by his son, whom he hath appointed here of all things, by, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. So Jesus is the express image of God. It's God expressing his love to mankind. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. So Jesus is God's expression of love to mankind. Yes, by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sin and sat down at the right hand of majesty and high. So that's, that's another point right there. You need to ask people this question. As according to the scripture, where is Jesus right now? Where is Jesus right now? As according to scripture, he said that he's at the what? Right hand of his father. He's not his, at his own right hand. All right? So the scripture clearly points out that Jesus is sitting at the seat of power right beside his father. Being made so much better than the angel as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again I will be to my father, and he shall be to me a son. All right, let's jump down to verse 8. But unto the Son he said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. So God called Jesus God. So God was speaking right there and said, But unto the Son he said, Thy throne, O God. All right? So there's no, no, no issue here that he is God, but he's not his own father. And if you read this entire, there's a comparison between Jesus and the angels. Why would God, who created angels, compare himself to angels? There's no comparison there. All right? So just, just some more ammunition to put in your, in your chamber right there. All right? So we understand very clearly who Jesus is. He was made he said he was made much better than the angels, and he had obtained an inheritance, a more excellent name than they. That's why I say, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. All right? So Jesus, all right, God has put a lot and stock and barrel into Jesus. He's the all in all. He's the, he, the Bible says in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things was what? made by him, and without him was made, nothing was made. Right? In him was life, and the life was the light of man. 
And it crescendo further down to say, and the word became flesh and dwelt among man. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So we understand that Jesus, who was a part of the Father, yes, because before he was, he was in the Father. The word, just like when I'm speaking, the word was in me before I speak it. All right? So when God said, let there be, the word came forth. All right? So we understand. So the word came forth and does, and does what the Father told it to do. All right? So, that, so they had a problem with that verb when they say in the beginning, the, the word was, and the word was God. Yes, the word was God before he spoke it into being. All right? So there's nothing too, 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 too hard in that one if you just study and understand the scripture. All right? So here we find that the Bible says he has put all fullness into Jesus. Because, it, because of him, everything exists. And because of Jesus, everything consists. All right? So he is, and he is, he is the first uh, 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 um, if born from, from, reborn from the dead. He's the first one that came alive from the dead, that he had this preeminence over everything. So this that we fear, the very death that we fear, even as we see here in, in COVID that took place, that Jesus came and he took, literally took the sting out of death. That's why the scriptures say, oh, grave, where's your victory? Oh, death, where's your sting? Can I take you back a little bit to just give you a synopsis of what probably took place there then? When Jesus was crucified, all right, the devil thought that he died. The devil thought that he had actually won. He was there in hell celebrating. He and his, his angels celebrating. On the third day, I just want to just let you know, on the third day, when Jesus arose and he, and he took a walk down to hell, the, the, the devil sensed a holy presence and he started to tremble. And when Jesus approached the gates of hell, oh my goodness, things start to happen. Lift up your heads, Zoe Gates, and be lifted up, he everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Oh, glory be to God. And he went up to the devil, and he took the key from, the, the, from, from death and hell, and he said, give me that key. No longer will you burden my people with the fear of death. Glory be to God. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts, uh, he is uh, the king of glory. So Jesus conquered death uh, and the grave. The grave couldn't hold his body down. So we don't have to fear death. Death to us as Christians is just a doorway into his presence. Glory be to God. So we serve a risen Savior, one who has all power in his hand. So here we have Jesus We've shown that God has put all this because he is the one who is the savior of the whole world. He's the savior of everything his point. So I love how God do it, that he doesn't confuse us, that we don't have to go to these different, different people. As I say, it's not Peter, it's not Paul, it's not John. As good as how uh, Paul, a preacher, is, as, as you know, they were fighting over them that I'm for Silas, I'm for Peter, I'm for Paul. But say, did, did, did Paul or Silas died for you? Only Jesus is the one. So every other religion, every other religion, as we know that Christianity is changed humanity, but every other religion, they, they don't have a risen savior. Christianity is the only, let me put it this way, religion that has a risen savior. The one that who has conquered death and the grave, the one that who lived triumphantly, and the one that that that, that can the Bible says there's no other name under heaven where which man shall be saved but Jesus. He's the only one that can forgive sin. He's the one that that as I say is the appropriation for us in that appeasement. He's the only one that could appease the Father on our behalf. All right, he paid a price that we couldn't pay, pay a debt that he didn't owe. So we owe everything to Jesus yeah. all our life. That's why Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Yeah. So he has lived an entire life. So here we find that Jesus, when he comes on the scene, he says that everything is written of him. 
Before he came, it, it was prophesied how he was going to come and what he was going to do. So when he came, the, the Bible says, here I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. So everything, Jesus never came to do a, do a, do a part with the law and the power, but he came to fulfill that which was written of him. I want you to understand, it's very important, that everything that Jesus did, he did that was written. His, his Jesus' mission to come is to show us how to, to, to live for the Father. How does a son relate to the Father? And he point also shows that we only have one agenda, and our agenda is to please the Father. And the only way to please the Father is to be obedient to him. Jesus, in turn, called us friends. And he said, you are my friend. You are my friend if you do what I say. So there's a precondition of being a friend of Jesus. We sing this song that we are a friend of God. Yes, he has proven himself uh, um, to be our friend. But are we his friend? Are we his friend? Are we, are we just his friend sometimes? Are we his friend only when we're in need? So these are questions as he challenged our relationship with him. Because most of us here, if not, uh, I, I'm assuming, are Christians. And we have given our life over to the Lord. So he's our Lord and Savior. He's the one that we say we're going to live for. And we're going to obey him. We're going to trust him. We're going to do what he says. So we have laid the foundation that Jesus is who he says he is. the son of God. All right? He's the alpha, he's the omega. He's the beginning, he's the end. You cannot get around him. He's so high that you can't get over him. He's so wide, you can't get around him. He's so deep, you can't get on him. Everything you go, everywhere you go, from the beginning of your life to the end of your life, you're, you're going to get in touch with Jesus. So your decision right now is what you're going to do with him. Who is Jesus to you, and do you really believe it? We're going to get in some deep waters now. As we see here, let's, let's turn. So one of the commandments as I read Jesus is saying to his disciples, always love one another. Love one another. He keeps telling that, say, there, there are a new commandment I give you to love one another. And I keep wanting to understand, why is he saying this at all times? That he should love one another. Because the disciples, as they were, were, were walking with Jesus, sometimes they would compete, want to compete against each other, compare uh, um, different gifts to each other, and all this. And God said, Jesus said, no, you won't be like other group. All right? The greatest of you will be the servant of each other. Jesus said, I came not to be ministered to, minister to, but to, to, just to minister Right? So Jesus was setting the example and said, just as I lay down my life for you, you ought to lay down your life for the brothers, for the brethren. Let's go to 1 John chapter 3. Just, just put a hole right there. Put a hole at St. John chapter 3. But just before we read that, let's go to... Uh, one sec here. Let's go to St. Matthew chapter 7, a very popular scripture. St. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Starting from verse 21. Just want to clear something here. It's read, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. We all want to enter into the kingdom and want to make sure. The Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. To make sure, to make sure, you want to be sure. It said, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that what, doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Wow, that, that one got to me right there. Because if somebody prophesies something and it comes to pass, you're definitely going to say, this is a man of God. Everything he prophesied come to pass, come to pass. 
How is it that he's not have a relationship with the Lord? So here we go. And it says, and in thy name have cast out devils. And some of us are feared to do that, to cast out devils. No, but if someone, you see somebody cast out demon, cast out devil, they must have the, the, the Holy Ghost and they must have a relationship with God to be able to do that. And that's our mindset. So here we have, and in thy name done many wonderful work. So you are gifted, you are talented, and you're using these gifts for service. But he's saying that you don't have an intimate relationship. Because he, this is what, and then will I profess, profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me that work iniquity. That word new is from a, a, a Greek word named ginesko, which means intimacy intimacy see how much i love you so it's an intimate relationship with you and this is what jesus is saying you can do all these things and still not make it into heaven because you don't have an intimate relationship with me yes you serve in church you do all of that you're on the usher board but you didn't spend that quality intimate relationship with me. And we're going to see in terms of where we need to be in terms of to make sure that we have that intimate relationship. Because you're going to see that uh, and you cannot say that you are right with God and not right with each other. If there's some animosity between each of us, something is wrong with your relationship with Jesus. He said that uh, let me not jump ahead. All right, good. And then will I prophesy unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me that worketh iniquity. So we understand that, as it says here, that you have to be a doer of the word. Yes, sir. I have to do a doer of the word. All right, let's go to 1 John chapter 3 now. Let me, let, let me see if I can. You just want me to hit a point. I uh, understand that I can't preach it all. So I won't preach it all. To lie. Okay, good. First John chapter 3, and I'm beginning at verse 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed.